Howdy, 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 and welcome to the Lady Walker Show. I am Lady Walker, beloved, and we have another Jim Dandy of a show in store for you. My guest is a culinary and executive chef at the Mississippi Art Museum. If I didn't pronounce that right, he will let me know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think of course. I got it wrong. Of course. <laughs> anyway, beloved, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nick. Wallace. Howdy, howdy, howdy do, Mr. Nick. Thank you. Thank you now, for having me. Oh, much obliged. Now, I got something wrong. I say, I said Mississippi Art Museum. It's Mississippi Museum of Art. Museum of mm -hmm. Art. Okay, mm -hmm. got that wrong. Mm -hmm. Sort of knew that when I was saying it, but before then, I had it right here. Mm -hmm. You did. You oh. did. I mean, you say art and museum together. I mean, we're pretty much the only one in the state that has that collaboration oh, and okay. two great food so great food huh great food of now course. we are going to talk about how you got to where you are today because off camera you told me some very interesting mm -hmm. thing make i mean you are an interesting person thank you and you are really putting to use your gifts your talent that you have been blessed with yeah just trying to trying to stay you know, faithful through throughout the whole process too but, you know, when you look at my grandmother's faces, you know, and they have these, you know, stern words to tell you, you have to be faithful because they're not going to let it, you know, they're going to remind you of it really? throughout your life, too. So, you know, mistakes has happened in my yeah. past, too. So uh, I'm better by You're that, better too. Of it, huh? Yeah. And I'm great to be able to sit right here and tell you that, too. Right. You know? Well, tell us, where did it all start? You are a native of Edwards, Edwards, Mississippi. Edwards, Mississippi. Um, and that's where it all started. That's where it all started. Um, this interest in culinary and all of that. Mm -hmm. Playing with pigs and knowing how to fish. Um, you know, naming your birds too, you know, on the chickens, you know. Uh -huh. We had a lot of Susie Q's and, <laughs> you know, we had a lot, we had a lot of crazy Dinah Ross. We had a chicken oh. named Dinah Ross. Wow, I'm pretty sure she would certainly appreciate that. Well, you can imagine, too, that that was that rooster, too, making all that noise every oh, day. Oh, okay. Oh, with the rooster named yeah. Diana Ross. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, was, it, was, it was great, too, because it was your alarm clock every day. Okay. So. Well, that is good. Yep, yep. So you were raised on a farm? Uh, raised on a farm. It was about an a acre and a half there on Military Road, pretty close to Calmaine Foods, um, right on the backside of Edwards. But I grew up there, and my dad has always been that leading farmer, um, which my grandmother has been that farmer and chef. So a lot, of, a lot of the, my story now has always adapted to when I was six and seven and eight years old, running up in the fields and you know, picking blueberries and coming back to the kitchen and my grandmother is throwing flour everywhere and, you know, great sweet smelling of jams and mm, preserves. And, yes. you know, she's right there just just moving that butter in and out of the, you know, the biscuit dough. And I mean, just the, the whole nine yards. So, but I love it though, too, because when I think about it though, I just get hungry. Mm -hmm. But two, I think about food of how I can create it in my own story. She has her story and luckily, and it's a blessing that she can still talk about her story too. And she don't cook as much as she used to, um, but that woman is the best chef I know. Really? Yep. So when you cook and she tastes your food, how is it? I mean, what does she think about it? Uh, it's, a, it's a little different, but it has my personality. Okay, okay. You know, everything that she did, you know, kind of spoke about her personality. She was always humble and giving, you know, and very this thoughtful. this was your grandmother on which side of the family? This, this is my dad, mom. Okay, Yeah, okay. This, is, this is Lynn L. Donald. Yeah, my dad is the Donald, uh, Donald family. Did a lot of cutting woods back then. My grandfather uh, used, uh, had a company back in the day that he, all he did was cut logs and, and take them to the paper mill and pro for processing pencils, paper, all that oh, kind okay. of stuff. Yeah. Now, as a child growing up, and you were see your grandmother prepare these meals. Mm -hmm. Then she like get out of the way, you know. You know, sometimes I would tell my mm -hmm. grandkids, no, not this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to move, okay? And then, then the next time, yeah. And then the next time is not this time. I know, yeah, but the I next understand. Time the same, same. Yeah. But nevertheless, you did learn something 
about cooking? Yeah, because I was, I was, I probably started off as being that that kid that was coming around wanting to lick the bowls. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, that process kind of stuck me there. So I wanted to actually see how these things are created because once you're licking the bowl and all and you're getting ready for the meal and then you sit down and you start consuming this stuff and then you see everybody's happy around the table, my dad and my uncles and all, they're all preparing for work. I was there, so I was there running the farm. So when my grandmother needed blueberries or something from the yard, she'll call me, so I'll just run like barefooted and go get these things. Now I don't have those type of feet now. You know, I put shoes on now, but you know, but back then though, you just lived that lifestyle right, right. and you just start asking questions, but she always wanted to answer those questions. She didn't give you measurements because she didn't roll off measurements no more, right. you know? So, but, but you definitely knew the basics of what she did though. And so they grew their own food, most of their own food? Yeah, majority of the food and, and you know, it was serious back then, you know, when you wanted to see a chicken get plucked and, you know, and I remember and, seeing that. Yeah, it was a farm to table lifestyle, you know. So that chicken and all, you wasn't sure if this was Diana Ross today, you know, you just <laughs> wasn't sure. Well, how many Diana Ross was it? I'm sure it was a lot, but some of them, you know, kind of look looked the same, yes. I'm sure. And back then too, I'm sure my uncle, my dad and them played games on me and my sister too. Did you become friends with any of the you know, pigs and Oh yeah, and of course, you know, of course. So my lifestyle right now, I'm 38 years old. I can still remember those times. So that's the reason why I actually tell my story too through my cooking. Uh -huh. But I just, you know, um, my, my grandmother got a little angry with me when I started getting tattoos and all, but it's all about my lifestyle. Like I'm faithful to what I do. Like this is me through and through, even when I go home and cook and all. So I got, you know, pigs and all that I can remember all on my arm now. Really? Oh yeah. You got a pig? Oh, okay. Oh I yeah. See. It's it's. Oh, nice uh, looking pig. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> you know it's it's farm vegetables and strawberries and bell peppers and cast iron skillets and catfish. That you know. That is so interesting because you got something you know tattoos that you don't have to regret later on in yeah, life. I don't. You know how it is when sometimes a man may get a woman name mm -hmm. tattooed on his mm -hmm. arm or somewhere on his body, and a woman may get a man tattooed mm -hmm. somewhere on his or her body. Yeah. <laughs> So that's good. Yeah, man. yeah. I mean, as far as the, the name thing, I've never been big on that. Unless I put a name on me, it's like my grandmother. Okay. That's, that's something different. I'll never regret. Okay. You know, that, that's not no, you know, fly by night kind of creation. You know, that's something that's been there and will always be there. So. But that is so neat. Thank the you. vegetables, the pig, mm -hmm. and, and you tell your story through the meals that you prepare. Yeah. Yeah. All my food has a story, too. So you, you just won't be just sitting down at the table eating the food. Uh, if you come into the art museum right now at the Palette Cafe and you look at the menu and all, you will see a lot of the story from the Mississippi Story Art Gallery. I have just walked through these galleries and all just to try to see if it's pictures and quilts and things that remind me of my past history. So I found one, a quilt that reminded me of my grandmother, you know, sitting at a dining room table. You got, um, you know, the grandmother, which I think was called like Big Mama mm -hmm. on the quilt, sitting there kind of standing up, kind of saying the grace while everybody's about to eat. So I put that on the menu as a picture of it. And then I did this great recipe called pickle fried chicken. So mm -hmm. I pickled chicken for three days before it's deep fried. And it's served kind of, you know, it's a big meal, served, and you just sit there and just wet your hands up and you just wow. eat, you know? Yeah. Ooh, I could just feel my, yeah. my tongue just salivating when you say it there. Mm. Yeah, you need to come, you need to come on down too, because I would <laughs> love to see you mm. eat my food, yeah. Well, I tell you what, well, yeah. we are going to take a break and come back and let you continue to tell us how you actually became a culinary. culinary. You went to Hines Community College yes. and, and where that led you mm -hmm. to where you are today. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll beloved, do. we will be right back. Welcome back, beloved. My guest is Nick Wallace, Chef Nick Wallace. Okay, now you were talking about some delectable food mm. on the break, and I tell you, well, you started talking about it before we went on break, and it mm. was just my mouth started salivating hearing that kind of cooking mm -hmm. that you do. And you said that you tell stories through everything that you cook. Mm -hmm. And I know once a month you have, what is this once a month that you have? 
Uh, about two, a little over two years ago, uh, I created this event with the marketing director there, which is Julian Rankin, and we, I wanted to create something that pretty much celebrates Mississippi. So we just abbreviate the Mississippi and called it SIP, S-I-P-P, and it's source, or everything SIP source. So everything from beverages to nuts to grains to meats, everything. So I put these farmers and I partner up with these farmers, I buy all this product from them, and I create a different concept every single month. And it happens uh, every third Thursday, it's all day. Uh, the afternoon we show a movie outside at the movie theater. I started inviting uh, food trucks on the Marsh Street because you know, the crowds and all are getting so big now, I had to get some help because every, I can't feed everybody. So it's, it's, it's going in a really, really positive direction. And too, it's helping out Mississippi's. Right. So this one coming up is gonna be celebrating um, like a Mississippi book fest. Okay. So I'm gonna create a, um, a whole menu spread that's off of nothing but creations of Mississippi um, book artists. Sounds so it's gonna be pretty cool. So I might have like little nibbits of secrets and all kinds of stuff that's gonna come out that you might not expect by looking at the menu. So we're just trying to keep it engaging. Um, and it's pretty tough though. Every two weeks I gotta start more menus and more research and development. So, but that's how much I care about Mississippi. every month. Every single Once month. A month. It's been going on like two and a half years now. That's a lot, of, it sounds like a lot of work goes into it. It's a lot of work and when I travel, I try to bring that back to a future concept too. So even when I'm in New York or you know, traveling to Tennessee, wherever I'm going. Yeah, because those are some places with being a culinary or chef, mm -hmm. it has taken you many places. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you have met many of people as well. I got a lot of friends out there in other states though. And the world is good though. Yeah, too. well tell us some of the places. You said New York, where being a culinary chef where it has taken you. Well I have uh, did a lot of stuff in New York. Um, I've uh, appeared on a, a, a few Food Network shows, so I go there and I'm in the Hollywood um, a few times. And New York is probably one of the ones that have been the most um, because lately for the last past five years, I've done a Mississippi dinner in Manhattan of New York at the James Beer House. So I love New York, there's a lot of great people, but a lot of people too don't know about that Southern charm and that Southern respect. Oh, so, okay. you know, by walking around the city and eating and all, I open the door for people, you know, no matter who you are, it could be old, you know, you could be old or you could be young, it doesn't matter, female or male, but if I know that opportunity is there for me to put a little bit of Southern charm, I do it. And a lot of people are a little hesitant, you know, you know, because they're just going by their day and it's so many people, but I still do it anyway. So I definitely try to go no matter where I go. So my last um, spot I just left was um, Gaston, Alabama. Okay. I was there yesterday training the District of Alabama on their new um, school year coming yeah, in. That's an interesting thing, the school mm -hmm. thing that you have partnership with. Yes, uh, it started uh, about two years ago for Jackson Public Schools. Um, I went to Mayor Hill, which is the food service director, and I was giving out awards for their award ceremony for their food service workers, and I loved it. Um, they did that because I had just came off of a Food Network show, which was Cutthroat Kitchen, and I went there and met a lot of people, made a lot of friends, and I just asked Mayor Hill and said, that is it an opportunity that I can get into the schools and show my craft inside the schools. You know, that would be a great way of giving back because, you know, I still remember of what my folks tell me. You know, I don't care as much as you might get, you know, in life, you better give back just as much. Oh, wow. So that's one of those things that I don't want to get, you know, pay for it either. It's all pro bono. These are things that I bring out my selfless acts and I go out and I touch a lot of hearts. So started with one school, which was Blackburn Middle School. That's the school that I graduated from. And now I took on all, all the middle school, which is 13 middle schools. And it's Creativity Kitchen is focused on Mondays. It's just on Mondays, because it will be a lot to turn Jackson Public Schools off their whole full meal program at okay. USDA. So it's only on Mondays, but it's great. Um, a lot of folks come out, parents and grandparents and friends to support their kids. So this, how often, once again, is this every... Every, every month. Every I month. mean, every, every Monday. Every for, Monday at a different school? No, all 13 middle schools. All 13 mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep, and, and what we do is when the school year comes back in, um, we give them a time to go ahead and get acclimated with what the things they, they have to do. So Creativity Kitchen will start in about the next month and a half, back with Jackson Public Schools. But in my meantime, 
Um, that's the reason why I went to Alabama. Alabama was very, you know, interested in to Creativity Kitchen. So I went down yesterday and, you know, trained the whole district on Creativity Kitchen. I implemented about 12 recipes there. So now they have a lot more scratch cooking to, to be, you know, to be done. They're rolling egg rolls. They're doing uh, vegetable fried rice. They're using a lot of local cauliflower, a lot of local squash and all. So it's... It's, it's, it's cool, but I'm... That's interesting because to get young people into eating mm -hmm. those vegetables, mm -hmm. that's, a, you know, a challenging thing. But I guess if you can be creative with on how you do it, yep. maybe they'll eat it. And, and that's the reason why I just wanted to title it Creativity Kitchen, um, because we can't take our kids too far too quick. You know, I can't just take, you know, bulgur wheat and quinoa and mash it into a burger and say, huh, <laughs> because we're going to, you know, we're going to have, you know, some resistance mm -hmm. there. And they're going to go the opposite way. Right. They're going to go straight to that honey bun or that moon pie, and they're going to say, forget this. But what we do is just take them, you know, a little piece at a time, you know, and that's how I try to take my life, just a little bit, because once I go back 16, 17 years, it's been a long road, but I still have a long road ahead of me. Yeah. Now, on your website, I did see that you share some recipes. Mm -hmm. Every single day. Every single day, about two or three recipes or so is shared. And, it's, and it goes from Indian cuisine to Mediterranean to Southern to, you know, French, Italian. So, you know, I just wanted people to be able to see that you can really get engaged at home into your food, but your food can also include your kids. But two, you know, don't you get tired? Like my favorite meal that my mom cooks is cream mushroom chicken. Oh my God. Oh, that sounds so delectable. Yeah, every birthday, my mom cooks me a, a large pan of cream mushroom chicken and I have the table to myself. <laughs> Um, to so yourself? To myself. No one else is around the table to help partake in uh, that? They can, but I just tell my mom to cook a little bit more, but she knows she knows her son's favorite, but that is definitely my favorite. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to take a break and come back and continue to know, uh, learn about who Nick Wallace is. Thank you. All right, beloved, we will be right back. Today's guest is Chef Nick Wallace, culinary curator and executive chef at the Mississippi Museum of Art. For more information, visit www.nickwallaceculinary.com or email reflectionchef at gmail.com. Welcome back, my peeps. Nick Wallace, Chef Nick Wallace is my guest. Okay, now. Somewhere, I think, probably towards the last end of the first segment, you were mm -hmm. getting ready to talk about that chicken, marinating that chicken. Mm -hmm. Chicken, depending on what part of the chicken, especially that white meat, yep, yep. it can be pretty challenging to penetrate seasoning into it. Absolutely. And, and, and the pickle fried chicken is a really good way to just take all those worries away. Um, but I wanted to do, you know, some, something like a family style fried chicken, but I wanted to do it just a little bit differently. So. Um, just marinate chicken, just like you make pickles. We make a ton of pickles at the restaurant and we just submerge it. We just take a little bit of the acidity out of, out of it so we don't want to actually cook the chicken, but we want the, the pickle brine to actually infuse in the chicken. So it took us a while to get it right. Um, so now we just leave it in the brine for about 72 hours. And when we get an order for it, we don't season the flour at all. We actually dredge it and we deep fry it. And it just takes your worries completely away. It even takes hot sauce away. Really? You know, it mm. takes it away. And I'm a hot sauce fan. Yes, I love to make too. it too. But it takes it away. And, you know, just like the white meat you were just talking about, to pull that breast of meat off of that bone and eat it, and you just taste mm. the flavors, you know, from the beginning to the complete mm. end. Mm. It is such a wonderful thing. Oh, yes, it is. And I could feed you anytime <laughs> because I love when guests mm. come in or anybody that I'm feeding that can you know, show me food expressions. You have a lot of food expressions and I yes. appreciate it too. I, I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can taste it. Okay, Thank you. With, with you describing how it is. I can. What about greens, collard greens? Because those, babe, can be pretty challenging to season just right. They can be too, and there's a lot of quick methods to it too. You know, once you start doing the trimming and the cleaning of them, you know, cutting them really super thin and not leaving them in big pieces is a big key too. Um, but cutting them really small, and you got different ways you can do it. You got chiffonade is the best way to do it. That's when you pretty much roll it up just like a, a ball of leaves, 
and you, you know, you're running your knife on it and you're just going to cut like little ribbons. Um, that's a great way, but you could just start your skillet with just a little bit of oil, onions, you know, and start sauteing them off so they wilt completely down. You know, start the process off because everything about food is a building process. You know, sometimes you can get it right and it's different if you're braising something in the oven. You know, you can braise. I have been known to, to be like a, a king of braising to put in like short ribs and things like that in the oven. And as soon as they come out hours later, you don't have to do anything else. I have been known to getting it right at the first time. But as far as like sauteing greens, it don't take a whole lot. Um, I would say stay away from the sugar. And, oh, really? And think about other things that can balance your taste buds off. Lemon is a great thing. Lemon zest is great. You know, um, of course, pepper and, and all is great, but I use uh, a tad bit of cumin um, and I love to use cardamom seeds. It's really good, too, and greens because it has a sweet component to it. Oh, okay. So it's just a little different way. So that's the reason why I blog and I post about the recipes every day, because I just want people to, you know, gather away from what you used to be known for as far as at your dinner table. Well, it's good that you don't mind sharing those recipes on your blog. That is really good because some people don't want to share their recipes with anybody. And that's a big problem too. You know, if I'm living a good lifestyle, I'm 38 years old and I think I'm pretty healthy. At least my doctor tells me that. <laughs> and, okay. you know, I mean, it's just, if you get it right in certain fields, you know, just share it off so everybody else can do it. And that's the one thing, too. I don't want to have those, that crab kind of mentality. I know, and we do have a lot mm -hmm. of that, okay? No, nah, share it. You know, I don't care if you, you know, I'm dealing with a farmer. You know, a lot of the farmers and all will share how you can do this at home. It's not to say that you're going to take money out of my pocket. No, you're going right. to live that same lifestyle and you know as what? me. It's, it's, a, um, it's a lot of business, <clears throat> excuse me, for many of people. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of business. I'm not, like you said, I'm not going to take the people who may be supporting you, mm -hmm. but uh, there are a lot of people to go around to support, yep. you know, even if you are in the same field. Yes, and that and, and that, I didn't say that the way I should have, but mm -hmm. I think you get the point. No, I definitely get the point. And you know, too, that's the other thing that I love now. I love to go into the Delta and a lot of areas that people can kind of, you know, ask questions and talk and say what they like about you and some say what they don't like about you. And that's great too. But two, you could just come together and building up a different process. You know, process together is something that I don't think a lot of people are familiar with. And, you know, I have a lot of friends outside of the state of Mississippi, but the one thing that they all tell me and one thing I do know, you know, me, I'm African-American, I'm in Mississippi and I'm trying to be somewhat of a leader in my own way. I'm not trying to be a leader in nobody else's way other right. than mine. This is I my like life. That. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my life and I'm going to walk my steps if, you know, with, with or without you, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I started this back when I was um, 18 years old. I had to fly to Anchorage, Alaska with Marriott when I was working for Marriott. And that was the first time I took a flight. I took it solo by myself. You know, I'd never been on a plane before and I was going to get some training um, and I was landed there for a little bit longer than expected. But that's how my motion of life has been. I just be faithful and I just go do it, you know? Just, just go do just it. Just go do it. And again, you travel a lot mm -hmm. with what you are doing. Doors are opening for you. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'd love to call it culinary advocate, you know, and uh, soon people will be able to see me a little bit more on TV as well. There's some exciting things for Mississippi because I'm a born and bred, you know, Mississippian. But most importantly, though, too, I have a strong family, a strong foundation, and my mom is my biggest fan, and I, I completely love it, though. I love my life. So now you grew up seeing your grandmother on your dad's side of the family uh, cook. Mm -hmm. What about your mom? But she worked a lot, so she wasn't able to. Yeah, my mom worked a lot. And then my, my, my mom's mom um, was disabled at a young age, driving, and she got in a car accident. So she still loved to cook. My grandmother was that one, you know, I, I know you're probably going to remember this when I say it. The, my grandmother was that one that sits in a recliner and has a big pot of water and a big bushel of greens here, yes. you know, and the whole time, you know, that, that just really teaches you about patience because I don't know many people in my life would take 30 and 40 pounds of greens, sit there the whole time, catching up with your stories and all, <laughs> peeling greens back, and two hours later you're done, pass it over to my mom, my mom put the finishing touches on it and cook meal for the family. 
you know, I mean, it's just all those components right there. Like you don't have to have both of your legs. You don't even have to have the right speech. All you got to have is a wonderful heart. I mean, just oh, period, though. That is great. You know? Well, I tell you what, we are going to take the final break and come back and <clears throat> let you get by any contact information okay. as well as your web website just in case someone may want to contact you about speaking or coming out doing whatever. Thank you. All right, beloved, we will be right back. Welcome back, my peeps. My guest is the culinary uh, executive chef, Mr. Nick Wallace. And I left off the music it's okay. part because I don't want to screw that up. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'm the executive chef and culinary curator at the Mississippi Museum okay, of curator. Art. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, there may be someone who is every bit interested in getting in touch mm -hmm. with you for whatever reason, mm -hmm. okay? So if you don't mind, just get about that contact info, make shine. Yeah, no problem at all. My website is nickwallaceculinary.com and the email that you can reach me at at any given time is reflection, no S, just reflectionchef at gmail.com. All right, well, I tell you what, Nick, it has been a plump, pleasing pleasure to sit and sup a little tea with you. Thank you. You know, I know we're not actually, you know, That's okay. sitting, but you get the point, right? You're wonderful. You're wonderful. I appreciate <laughs> you very much. So, yeah. I, I appreciate you coming out and gracing us with your lovely presence. Thank you I very much. That. Thank you. So anytime you feel like you want to come out and to update us on whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. you are more than welcome. We'll but I know you have a lot of things on your agenda. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are going here and you are going there. You are doing so much. Mm -hmm. But anytime you get a free time, just please step back in. Come back in and let, a, let us know what's going on with you. Yeah, I will do. And I just want to say, just be on the lookout for Southern Living Magazine next year, right before summer. Um, I have a huge catfish story that's coming out oh, featuring okay. me and the Delta. It's going to be awesome. All right. Yep. We'll do. We'll mm -hmm. do. And on that note, we got to go. Deborah is giving me the wrap up. <laughs> Y'all, and uh, by the way, thanks to Trill for tuning in. And I will see you next time on the Lady Walker Show. Ta-ta.